Okay, grade eight, this is your homework for Wednesday night, March 7th, I think. Uh, you have 18 questions. I'll reach back to things you've already learned this year. The first eight questions, the first question of nine, excuse me, uh, says 16 and a half percent of 220. Technically, this is not a question you have done yet, but we're going to give it to you anyway. So 16 and a half percent, what you're needed to do is think of it as being 16.5 out of 100, which is 16 and a half percent. And then you're going to need to think of it as an equivalent fraction of 165 over 1,000. So if you see it that way, then you can say 165 thousandths, which is 165 thousandths of 220. Take your calculator. 165 thousandths of 220 is 36 decimal three. And since it's money, it's $36.30. Make sure you show this work though. That work that I showed is important. The second question says uh, the cost to paint this building. So I'm going to do it on a new page. So the building is a rectangular prism. And the dimensions of the building, just to confirm, are 10, 8, and 6. They're 10 by 8 by 6 meters. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is calculate the surface area. So if I think of this front, I have two of those. So I have two fronts that are 10 meters by 6 meters. And I have two sides that are 8 by 6. And I have two that are 10 by 8. So here I would have 2 times 60, which is 120. And I have 2 times 48, which is 96. And I have 2 times 80, which is 160. When I add those all up, I'd have 256. 266, 276, 286, 286 square meters of surface area. What the second part says, if one can, which is $42, can paint 40 meters squared, how much will it cost to do the building? So one can is $42, and it can do 40 square meters of surface. So the first thing we have to do is take our 280 square meters of surface, 286, excuse me, square meter surface, and divide it by 40. And it tells us that we need seven cans and a little bit more. So we need 7.15 cans. So really, you can't buy a partial can. So we need to buy eight cans to paint that. And if each one costs $42, multiply that by 42. And we get the answer, which is $336. Question three, excuse me, that's the wrong one. Question says, is this a right triangle? So it's 15.38 and 13. 15 point, oh, wrong one. 15.3. 15.38 and 13. And is it a right triangle? Well, if it's a right triangle, Pythagoras will work. So if I put all these things up here, this would be 169. This would be 64. And the area of those two added up would be 220, 220, 233, I think, meters squared would be the area of that square. So if the square root of 233 is 15.3-ish, then we know it's a 90-degree angle. So I'm going to take my calculator, take 233, press the square root button, and it's 15.26, which would round out to be 15.3. So the answer is yes, it is a right triangle. The fourth question says $2.20 for 180 versus $4 for 350 mils. So I'm going to write a new page for this one. And it's $2.20 for 180 mil. Is that 180? Is that right? 180 mils and $4 for 350. $4 for 350 mils. So the first thing we're going to do is compare them in unit rates of 100 milliliters. So 220 for 180 is equal to how much for 100 milliliters? And remember, there's three ways we can solve it. We could do the algebraic method, we could do it by the division method, or we can do it by uh, the unit rate method. So for this one, I know that if I divide by 1.8, it'll get me the 100. So if I divide 220 by 1.8, that will get me my answer. So I'm going to take my calculator and go $2.20 divided by 1.8, and that tells me 
it's approximately a dollar twenty two for a hundred mils. Now in the second example, I'm going to do it a different. I'm going to do it the algebraic method, the other method that we learned. So it's four dollars for three hundred fifty mils. How much is it for a hundred mils? So remember, if we multiply across here, we'd get 350x is equal to the product of these two, which would be 400. Divide both sides by 350, and nobody's talking during the test, I hope. So I take my calculator and go 400 divided by 350 is roughly 1.14. So the better deal is this one, and that's the proof. Okay, next question. It says, what are these as decimals? So in order to take 7 eighths, which is a fraction, and convert it to a decimal, there's two ways we can do it. We can divide 7 by 8, that will work. Or the other way we can do it is create an equivalent fraction with a 10, 100, or 1,000 denominator. 8 is one of those numbers that if you multiply it by 125, you get 1,000. So if I multiply this by 125, I get 875, which is 875 thousandths which therefore, as a decimal, is written as 875 thousandths. As a percentage, that would be 87.5%. 1.4 is 1 and 4 tenths, which in lowest terms is 1 and 2 fifths. And as a percent, it's a kind of an interest. So since 1 and 4 tenths is really 14 tenths, which is really 140 hundredths, it's therefore 140%. So the answer for the percentage is 140%. I think I can put that in there. 140%. And finally, 18.5% is 18.5 out of 100, which is 185 over 1,000, which is 185 thousandths which in lowest terms, I'm too lazy to reduce it, so we'll just keep it as that. Our next question has 3 and 1 eighths divided by 4 fifths. Now, the first thing you should do whenever you're working with fractions, no matter what operation it is, it's probably always easy to change it to a mixed fraction, or an, imp an improper fraction, excuse me. So for this one, I'm going to change it to 25 eighths divided by 4 fifths. And we said we already agreed before that the easiest way to work with division of fractions is to change it to multiplication and use the reciprocal of the second fraction. So I'm going to change it like that. I'm going to multiply my numerators out, I get 125. Multiply my denominators, I'm going to get 32. There are only three 32s in 125. That's 96, which would mean there's 29 left over. Your final answer is going to be 3 and 29 30 seconds. These are some tough questions today. I know. That's okay, though. You're smart. The next question has negative 2 multiplied by whatever these brackets work out to be. Well, this one here is going to be negative 14 plus a negative 3. It's going to be a negative 17. The whole brackets are going to simplify to be negative 17. And a negative 2 times a negative 17 is a positive 34. In the, in the eighth question, we have algebra. I'm going to get rid of my constant first by subtracting 12 from both sides. I get negative 5x. It's really important you make sure this stays with the variable. Negative 5x is equal to negative 26. I'm going to divide both sides by that coefficient, negative 5. Not 5, but negative 5. And x will equal, well, if I think about 26 over 5 as an improper fraction, that's going to be 5 and 1 fifth which is what this actually works out to be 5 and 1 fifth. So we can keep it as a fraction, 5 and 1 fifth, positive, because a negative divided by negative is a positive. Or 1 fifth is decimal 2. So we can also say it's equal to 5 decimal 2. 1 and 1 fifth is the same thing as 5 decimal 2. And finally, graph this particular one. I'm going to put down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the first thing I have to do is make a table of values. I'm going to go x and y. And if x is 1, then 5 take away 4 makes it 1. So if x is 1, y is 1. If x is 2, y is 6. And if x is 3, if I put a 3, that's 15 take away 4, which is 11. So I realize 
after making my table of values that I don't need all th four um, parts or all four uh, quadrants. I simply need to make the first quadrant. My Y value has to go as high as 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And my Y only has to go 1 or X only has to go 3. So my first one's 1, 1, which is right there. Uh, 2, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is right there. And 3, 11, 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is right there. There's my first three coordinates, and that's my graph. This is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. Okay, your second ones, area and perimeter. Well, the perimeter of a circle is the same thing as circumference, which is pi d. So if we use pi as 3, it would be 3 times 16, which is 48. That's going to be our... Perimeter, our area is pi r squared, which is 3 multiplied by the radius, which is 8, not 16, because that's the diameter squared, or 3 times 64, which is 192. So 192 is the area. The perimeter is 48. You add those two together, I get 240 meter, or 240 is the number, because it's the area plus the perimeter. Here we have a distributive property. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 20. I get x minus 5 left over here, and over here I have 11. I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and x equals 16. In my next question, I have a few fractions. The first thing I do is multiplication, so I'm going to keep 3 quarters here. I can cross-reduce here when I multiply those, giving me 1 eighth. And then I'm going to still keep my 3 quarters because I have to change this to multiplication by the reciprocal. When I change to multiplication by the reciprocal, those cross reduce. So really I have 3 quarters plus 1 seventh. 28 will be my common denominator. 21 28 plus 4 will equal the final answer, which is 25 28. Question four uh, is an integer question. So negative two take away, let me keep this take away, and I'm just going to do this here. I'm just going to think of it as that. So five times negative three is negative 15, and negative 15 times a negative seven is a negative, is a positive 95. So when I do this thing in the brackets, this, this here, if I multiply all those numbers out, I get a positive 95. Keep flip change. I'm going to get a negative 97 as my numerator. Then the last thing I have to do is divide it by negative 10. When you divide by 10, you just move the decimal. A negative divided by negative is a positive. My answer is going to be 9.7. Next question. We're trying to find the missing number, so we need an equation. It goes up by 4 here, or goes up by 8, excuse me, here. It goes up by 4 here. 8 divided by 4 will tell me the coefficient, which is 2. So therefore, it's 2x, something, something equals y. Well, if I substitute this first 10 in here, 2x will be 20. But in order to get it to be 8, I have to subtract 12. So there's my equation. 2x minus 12 equals y. I'm looking for x being 1,000. So if I substitute 1,000 in here, I get 2,000 minus 12, which is 1,988. That's the number we're looking for. Now for this one, 50 meters in 1.8 seconds, the first thing I'm going to do is break it down into one second by dividing 50 in 1.8 by 1.8. So 50 divided by 1.8 is 27.8 roughly. I'm just going to keep it 27.8 meters in one second. Now I know there are 3,600 seconds in an hour, so I'm going to multiply by 3,600 seconds. So 27.8 meters in one second multiplied by 3,600 is 100,080 meters in one hour, which means since there's 1,000 meters in an hour, that's 100 kilometers per hour, approximately, 100.08 kilometers per hour. All right, our next ones. Uh, we have a right triangle here. So I'm going to make my right triangle. 1.8 goes here and 6.3 goes here. 
If I attach my squares to each of these three sides, I'm going to have to definitely use a calculator. If the side length of this square right here is 1.8, then 1.8 squared will be 1.8 times 1.8. That means the area is 3.24. The other one will be 6.3 times 6.3, which is, if I move it over here, no, not that, this. The 6.3 will have an area of 39.63. Add that to the other square, which is 3.24. means that this square will have an area of 42.93. Find the square root of that. And you find that approximately the length of that diagonal is 6.6 .6 kilometers. All right. Question 8, 21% of 180, you can do this mentally. 10% is $18. So 20% is double that, which would be $36. 1%, we move the decimal over two places. So it is $1.80. And therefore, 21% is $37.80. And the last question, what is 33 over 111 in lowest terms? Well, 33 and 111 both share 3 as a factor because we know that a number has 3 as a factor. If you can add the digits and the sum of the digits is a multiple of that number, then so too is the number. So I can divide both by 3. 33 divided by 3 is 11, and 111 divided by 3 is 37. So your final answer is 11 37ths.